However, much the takeover of Manchester United is really annoying because of the L game that the Glazers are really playing. There is some exciting news that we ma that we are spitting in the next coming days as the 55th Qataris takeover bid is expected to come in from Sheikh Yassim Al Thani to the Glazers. Welcome to United Matters channel. How are you guys and where you watching us from? I go by the names of Rock and David. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Now, smash the like button close to 200 times and continue to really comment comment on this video and do the needful to subscribe if at all you're watching us for the very first time. Peter Schmeichel, the legendary goalkeeper of Manchester United, has gone ahead and given Eric Ten Hag his flowers on his first season at Manchester United, <clears throat> breaking down everything that he really had to do and he did it and obviously why he needs to go out there is there and even pinch onto his skin and obviously know that he's really a special person that has gonna hate to come to Man United. And lastly, Roy Keane has gonna hate to call Fred stupid after the foul he made onto Kevin De Bruyne that resulted into the second goal of Man City that gifted the trophy to our rivals, the nemesis of Manchester City. So let's get this going. We all know that the takeover of Manchester United is so much anticipated to be announced, you know, this week that we started today on Monday. That's it. And Sheikh Jassim Al Thani last made a bid of 5.5 billion pounds. The Glazers are sold on an idea of selling the club 100% on 6 billion pounds. Ineos, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, wants to take half of the club and obviously buy some shares of the Glazers and obviously get majority ownership of the club and in three years to come he'll take over the club and obviously show the Glazers the exit way. So today Miguel Dileni, he works with the Independent, has gone ahead and really told us the following as far as this takeover is really concerned. Now he has told us that Ineos remain quietly confident there, but it is seen as conspicuous that Reign have not granted any preferred bidder status. It means Qatar are still involved and the Sheikh Jassim Al Thani led bid have drawn their encouragement from that. Now, Ineos think that they are confident. <laughs> That's it. Now, what I was going to hate to give Sheikh Jassim Al Thani more confidence is Rain Group have not granted anyone preferred bidding status. And to show you that the Rain Group are nobodies into this, when Sheikh Jassim Al Thani was submitting his fourth bid of 5.5 billion pounds to, to the Glazers, he never passed through the Rain Group. He, they made the bid. To the glazers directly it shows you that the rain group is like non-existent you know the process has been described as vague and it's really the best exhibition of something that is really so much disorganized because you cannot put there a company to oversee the takeover of the club and then you override it and you find yourself talking to the Glazers. shows you that the Glazers are exactly in run of this and they're telling the rain group what to do. Now, Sheikh Jassim Al Thani made a bid to the Glazers directly, meaning that he speaks to the Glazers directly and he knows exactly what they want. And if at all the Glazers were so much in unison with Sir Jim Ratcliffe, they would have gone ahead to find themselves in a position of obviously accepting his offer and really tell Sheikh Jassim Al Thani that please, we don't want your money anymore. But the fact that they accepted the fourth bid to come in through, that means they are still putting Sheikh Jassim Al Thani in consideration of a full sale for Man United. Now, Miguel Dileni concluded this by telling us the following that the Qataris have already upped their offer after the supposed final deadline. It could go up again in what is a far greater likelihood, though the process could go on for months. Now, we are told 
by Miguel Dilani, he's a chief football writer at the Independent, that <coughs> the Qataris have already made a bid past the deadline day, you know, that of 5.5 .5, that happened after Gra Avram Glazer paid a visit to the father of Sheikh Jassim Al Thani at the Mayfair Hotel in London. After that, a bid went in through. Then now, there is a likelihood that they should they could go higher. And going higher means they are going to do the needful and obviously pay six billion pounds. The exact evaluation of the Glazers for the club of Man United. So that draws back my mind to what we call <coughs> an analogy, right? A journey of a hundred kilometers, you've walked 90, 90 kilometers, 10 kilometers left. Would you abandon the journey and go back? Because going back is like walking another 90 kilometers, and that is 180 kilometers, and you've not gone back with what you wanted. Because you started this 100 kilometers journey when there is something you're going to pick at a 100 kilometer mark. With 10 meters, to, with the 10 kilometers to go, you say, I'm tired of the process of walking and what I've gone through, let me go back. You know, that is an action of cowards. And it looks like Sheikh Jassim Al Thani is not tired, he's not a coward. He has walked 90 kilometers out of the 100 journey kilometers and these 10 kilometers won't stop him from obviously getting what he wants. So, if he has gone ahead to make 5.5 billion pounds bid, that is like 95% of exactly what the Glazers really need. So, he's left with just 0.5% and 0.5% cannot hinder him from making the bid. So, making the bid complete means he should get the 0 0.5, 0 0.5 billion pounds, add them to 5.5 .5 billion pounds to take the tally to 6 billion pounds. And it's highly expected. The likelihood is high. The appetite for the Glazers, the appetite for the Qataris to take over Manchester United is increasing. When you look at what is happening at PSG, Neymar wants to leave, Messi has already left, Sergio Ramos has already is leaving, it's no longer a team that attracts stars and they really know that after losing all those stars, it's better to get on a team like Man United that has close to 1 billion fans all over the world that attracts stars to go ahead and really put your merchandise of the Qataris there. That is a business that everyone has gone ahead to really accredit as far as as far as as far as the takeover of united is concerned so don't be shocked in the coming days as this week starts when you get a story that the qataris have gone ahead to make the bid complete to six billion pounds and for this however much we hate the glazers you just have to go ahead and really hail them to be good businessmen because for them they don't mind about man united you know all what they care about is the money right so Sheikh Jassim Al Thani is going to exactly do that because he cannot see this club go out of his hands because of 0 0.5 billion pounds. That's it. So I think he's going to make it there. The Glazers will benefit. But the big question is, do the Glazers want to leave? That's the huge question. So we wait and see what is going to happen. But my huge confidence is hinging onto Sheikh Jassim Al Thani and the Qataris communicating with the Glazers directly, meaning that they know exactly what they want and they want to sell the club. That's it. They want to sell the club and my understanding tells me that they want to use they want to use they want to use Sheikh, they want to use Sir Jim Ratcliffe to, to see to it that they frustrate <coughs> sorry about that they frustrate Qataris to hit six billion pounds. That's it. Because Sir Jim Ratcliffe doesn't have money. You know, he doesn't have liquid cash. He doesn't have liquid cash. Even the money is going to use to really buy Man United, all the 50% shares, all 51% 51, 51 shares, he's going to borrow it from the bank. <laughs> That's it. So there is a bank already lined up to borrow money to um, Sir Jim Ratcliffe to buy Manchester United. So the Glazers have all their hopes in. Sheikh Jassim Al Thani, but they only want six billion pounds. So let's wait and see. 
if at all Sheikh Jassim Al Thani is going to really put in the fifth bid. But it is anticipated that a fifth bid is going to come in through and the takeover will be complete and maybe the Glazers will find themselves in a position of really giving up and obviously understanding exactly what they want. If they get what they want and they go, the better for the club of Man United. Now, Peter Schmeichel, you know, he was a goalkeeper of Man United. He was part of the treble winning team, you know, has come out and read said the following about Eric Ten Hag. He has to look back at this season with positive eyes. He changed a lot. He had opportunities that he took in order to set the rules. This is how he wants it. Whether it be Rashford arriving late or Ronaldo, he really showed everyone who is the boss. This is the most important bit of what he really had to do at the club of Man United. You know, one thing that people underestimate is a manager showing his, his stand and obviously his power. After losing four goals, after losing four goals to Brentford, Eric Ten Hag made these players run, you know, 13.5 kilometers. He also joined them and they ran these kilometers together. <clears throat> he showed them that we are in this together. After that running, he told them, let me tell you this. When I was coming here, they gave me the power to hire and the power to suck. That's it. And for the power to suck, he exercised it on Ronaldo that he should leave the club of Man United. That's it. And he left. You know. And he has gone ahead to really bench Rashford on the game of Wolves that he won one goal to nil because he arrived for the match prep 15 minutes late. You know, he overslept. Rashford was benched and came off the bench and scored the winner. So he has gone ahead to exercise his power. Even Harry Maguire, you know, who had really gone ahead to make clicks into the dressing room of Manchester United, has no words to talk because the man has gone ahead to unify that dressing room and he plays everyone on merit. And he has gone ahead to tick those boxes of really getting the dressing room back in order. Then Peter Schmeichel concluded by saying the following to Eric Ten Hag and giving him his flowers that he set standards he set standards and told them precisely that he wants and told them precisely what he wants and they got a result out of it they got one trophy and of course finished in the third in the Premier League it's better than what we expected so he's going to be disappointed so he's going to be disappointed now so Eric Ten Hag has gone ahead to exercise his rights and obviously has gone ahead to really get us a season that most of us never highly anticipated. I knew that he would go ahead and really maybe be in the fourth place in the Premier League, but going that far in the UEFA Europa League, winning a Carabao Cup, playing in an FA Cup finale with a squad that we had, limited as it was, I never expected it to go that way. But obviously Ten Hag gave us a dream come true that we never all saw coming. So Peter Schmeichel is going to hate to give Eric Ten Hag his flowers and what is going to hate to do at Manchester United to turn us back into a club that even Pep Guardiola came out in several press conferences and really said, I can see Man United come back, you know, because of Eric Ten Hag and the quality and discipline is going to hate to instill in the players of Man United. Now, Lastly, Roy Keane has really gone ahead to select Fred. He has said, Fred had Kevin De Bruyne where he wants him. De Bruyne has his back to the goal and then Fred fouls him. It's the height of stupidity, but we've seen that from him so many times over the years. Now, to me, if at all there is a clear out I want at Manchester United, I want players like Fred, Scott McTominay to quit that club. Because if you are not composed enough, you will always go ahead and really make such stupid fouls like the one he made that resulted into us conceding the second goal. You are having Kevin De Bruyne on the touchline and you foul him, yet he's going into the corner flag and Luke Shaw was running back to retract and obviously cover up. So I think Roy Keane is really very much, very much right because and spot on on what this man did, you know. You don't make such fouls. That's why when he made a foul on Jack Grealish, 
towards the 85th minute. No one blamed him because Jack Grealish had yards of space and obviously he would have gone ahead to really find Haaland and obviously Haaland to score against us. So I really understand that Fred made a huge mistake and few people are not really paying attention to detail to the result of that second goal. People have gone ahead to blame David De Gea and I wonder which eyes people used to watch the game of football. You know, the ball of David De Gea went through two defenders of Manchester United. David De Gea was obstructed. He couldn't get the clear flight of the ball and that's why he couldn't really save it. For all what has gone ahead to do this season, people have gone ahead to select him because of those two goals. The first goal, no goalkeeper can save it. No goalkeeper can save it. It was hit very well. And I know why. The shift, that's why they call blame shifting, you know, and the blame shifters. But that entire team of United played badly. Apart from Bisaka, Linderoff, Luke Shaw, and Rafael Veran, the rest of the team was crap. Let's all admit. Apart from Garnacho who came off the bench and really put in some power. So let's wait and see what this week gives us, whether Fred is going to be sold, but is one of those that is considered sellable by Man United. So, guys, your thoughts on to you? Fifth Qatari's bids expected to come in through, you know. What do you take? What do you think about it when it comes in through? Do you think that Blazers will really send the club to check Jesse Althani and Peter Schmeichel giving his props to Eric Ten Hag? Lastly, Roy Keane calling Fred stupid. Do you think he's right? I sign out for now. See you later. Good morning, and I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I'm out, my mates.